What is going on everybody and welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin and I got a couple of quick announcements to make before we get into the actual content for today's video. The first is that I'm thinking about dropping the number of uploads per week to two instead of three. It's mostly because there's just not a ton of content right now and I don't want to put out stuff that ends up getting repetitive or boring for you guys. So I want to make sure each video that I do is well thought out and well put together. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you want me to keep up the three video a week thing? Do you want me to move it down to two? The other piece of news I wanted to talk about was I've officially started planning a 500 subscriber giveaway for you guys for all the support you've given me through this lockout. And I'm thinking it's going to be some sort of Red Sox signed memorabilia, a current Red Sox player. I'm not going to do an old Red Sox player that no one's ever heard of. It will be a decent named guy for the autograph. Um, whether that's a card or a baseball or a hat is up in the air right now. I'm probably going to go card. So let your moms, dads, sisters, brothers, families, that guy down the block who won't let the Bill Buckner game go. Your cousin from Boston. Tell all of them to come over here and hit that subscribe button so we can get to 500 and I can give you guys some really cool free Red Sox merch. Anyways, on to today's video. It is Saturday, which means we are talking about another Fenway Future. If you do not know what that is yet, Fenway Future is a series on this channel where I pick a Red Sox top prospect. We go over who they are, how they play, and what their impact on the Red Sox might look like. As always, though, before we get into it, make sure you yourself are subscribed as we are going for that 500 giveaway. Also, make sure you guys have liked this video as well. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. I'm honestly surprised we haven't covered this prospect yet. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for it and I just don't know why I skipped over his name so much in these. So the prospect I want to talk about today is Jay Groom. Jay Groom is a left-handed pitching prospect for the Boston Red Sox, who was drafted in the first round of the 2016 draft. If you did not know, Jay Groom at one point was the number one overall draft prospect in 2016, but kind of fell off because of sustainability concerns. Currently, Jay Groom is the eighth highest player in the Red Sox farm system, but is yet to crack the top 100 list for the entire MLB. And the main reason he hasn't been on that top 100 list is because Jay Groom's had a bit of a rough go of it in the minor leagues. Since being drafted, he has dealt with a multitude of injuries in his lat and forearm, most notably that Tommy John surgery he had in 2018, which limited most of 2018 and tw all of 2019. Aside from injuries, the second he gets back from his Tommy John surgery, coronavirus hits and his season is canceled. So for the first five years that the Red Sox have signed this guy, he has only pitched 66 innings. The good news is in 2021, he did play most, if not an entire full season in the minor leagues. And while he was down there, he actually has some really good stuff. His slider is definitely his number one pitch. It's a mid 80s slider that has a ton of break and tends to miss a lot of bats. He also has a fastball that sticks right in that 92, 93 range and a curveball that at one point was his best pitch. And I'm not saying it's gotten worse over the years. It's just that the slider is so good that it's overtaken that curveball. Finally, he's got a sinking changeup that he wants to add to his full time arsenal, but that is still a work in progress. In 2021, Groom spent time in both single A and double A, so I combine the stats for you. So in 2021, Jay Groom had a 5-9 record, a 4.81 ERA, a 1.27 whip, 113 strikeouts, and an opponent batting average of 239. That's all over 21 games. Jay Groom's scouting grades are below, and it's mostly what I just said. His slider, curveball, and fastball are all graded above average, while that changeup sitting right at average. Honestly, these are pretty decent grades for a starting pitcher. Now, Groom's ETA is 2022, and most people seem to think that he's going to be on the opening day roster for the Boston Red Sox whenever there is an opening day. It's mostly because he was added to the 40-man roster right before the lockout, and most people assume that's because they want him on the Red Sox immediately. 
However, with the lockout lasting as long as it is, I have a feeling that might change in the future. What I mean by that is that the lockout has officially started to cancel games and it's probably going to be a very short spring training when the MLB does come back, if there's really any spring training at all. Jay Groom has only pitched one full season in the minor leagues and it's been at the double A level. I think the Red Sox had a plan of putting him on the 40 man roster, letting him have an entire spring training where yes, you aren't playing players at their 100% fullest. You are getting live at bats against guys who are major league caliber players. You also have the first couple months of the season to be able to work out kinks and stuff like that. If you're not a great bullpen arm, you could still get snuck into games where you're losing seven to one or six to, it happens, right? It's baseball. So I think that was the plan going into the 2022 season, but now that you've got the shortened up stuff, my best guess and what I think should happen is start Jay Groom in AAA for the first half of the season. The reason for that is to just get his feet wet against guys who, yes, they aren't MLB ready talent yet, but they're fringe guys, so right on the edge. AAA is kind of that middle ground between good, really, really good AA players and average MLB players, so it might be the perfect starting point for Jay Groom this season. As for his performance when he comes up, in my opinion, once he gets to the Red Sox, he's going to spend some time in the bullpen, and by that I mean at least a couple of years. We probably won't see Jay Groom make a bid for a starting pitcher position until at least 2024. And what I mean by that, I think that there are guys ahead of Jay Groom that are going to get the invitation to the rotation before he does. A key example of this is Garrett Whitlock. I think Garrett's already proven himself in the majors, and he definitely deserves to have the ability to try his luck at being a starting pitcher in the major leagues. I don't think that'll happen until 2024, though, which is why I say Jay Groom's got a long ways to go. As for his performance, I think he ends up as a middle reliever. He's not totally built for a closer or setup role. And if the Red Sox long-term plan is to get him into the rotation, I think that a middle relief role would fit him perfectly. He gets to eat up some innings, get used to multiple innings in the big leagues. And if he stays healthy, he could be a very good middle reliever. He's got the stuff and he's got the stamina, and I think he could be very good. However, that is if he stays healthy. That's the key here. He clearly has some injury issues, and if that starts to come up again, in my eyes, this ends up as a bust pick. Let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of Jay Groom? Do you think he's going to be able to turn it around and become a very good pitcher at the MLB level? Do you think that he ends up getting traded or that he busts down into the minor leagues where he, he can't finish it up? He gets another injury and that's just it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. As always, if you've made it to the end of this video, do me a favor and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you guys have hit that like button as well. Remember, we are on our way to 500 subscribers for that giveaway, so make sure you're sharing it with everybody. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the next one.